Well, good morning, friends. We're so glad that you're here today. What a great day to be here at New Hope Christian Church. God is so good. We're glad that you're a part of this day. If you would at this time, take that communication card that's in your bulletin. Would you do that? Take that communication card that's in your bulletin right now. Fill it out. Put your name, address, telephone number on there. And uh, also uh, any, any information that you need to get with, to us, communicate to us, just put it on that card if you would. Would you do that? Put it on that card. That'll be great. And uh, also any prayer request. Be sure to put those on there. Now listen, you know we talk about this periodically, but somebody just told me, and this is such a neat thing. You know we ask you to check in on Facebook if you got your, you know, if you're a Facebook person, check in on Facebook every Sunday. Somebody just told me that every Sunday they check in on Facebook. Their boss at work saw it, came to her and said, you know, every Sunday I know she check in to church. It convicted me, and I've decided to go back to church. Okay, so don't take that for granted. All right, now we want them to come to church here, but that's all right. They, you know they're going to church, and that's good that's a good thing so uh, be sure to check in on Facebook if you do do Facebook now I want to remind you of a few things first of all a uh, new hope has a brand new care ministry team we have mentioned this to you just briefly in the past because we're just starting them Judy Hamlin is leading that care ministry team uh, Mary Ellis is overseeing the operation and uh, our preparation delivery of needed or requested food if we have people in the hospital or whatever if there's a need out there for food we want to take care of that need and uh, this is such an important ministry team uh, in the back of the auditorium right back here is a sign up sheet and if you would sign up if you would like to provide a meal if we call upon you we're not going to call on you every week but if there's a need you might be called on okay if you're not called on don't worry about it don't feel like you've been left out it just means there hasn't been a need all right so uh, sign up if you would and that will help Judy and Mary as we start this uh, new ministry team we love to see new ministry teams established don't we more people involved in ministry that's such a great thing all right uh, next Saturday this Saturday this coming Saturday December 1st 10 a.m. We're going to have a little party here at the church to decorate the church, okay? We had a great time last year with this, this uh, decoration uh, time, and, and I hope that you'll be here to help us decorate. We need the help of everybody. We've got to put up Christmas trees and do all kinds of stuff and nativity scenes and, and get ready for Christmas, okay? And I know you're ready, or, or at least you know it's coming, right? And it's going to be December on that day, so it's time to get ready if you're not ready. So plan to be here, if you would, at 10 a.m. this coming Saturday, and uh, we'll have some donuts here for you, some coffee and things like that, and we'll have a great time putting up those, those, uh, those decorations. Uh, the 2019 proposed financial plan is in the hallway. You can pick one up if you haven't as of yet. And then next Sunday, right after our, our uh, church service, we will have a congregational meeting to approve that financial plan. So if you have any questions, ask me uh, about those, and we'd be happy to address those. Or Donald Worthington back here, ask him about those, and we'd be happy to answer your questions. Also, we want to remind our ladies, already a lot of ladies have signed up for Make It and Take It. Ladies, I hope you'll invite your friends to Make It and Take It. What a wonderful outreach opportunity this Christmas. We're bringing in an artist, uh, from uh, Lakeland, Florida, uh, Heidi Wineland is her name, and she's an honored uh, artist in, in that area, and boy, she does a lot of good stuff. And we've got all kinds of little craft things uh, scheduled. I mean, not we. I don't have any of them planned, but, but others do, and, um, and, and you're going to enjoy it. You'll have a blast. Uh, plan to come to make it and take it. That will be Saturday, December the 8th from 9 to 11.30 a.m. Uh, Chef Dave Holroyd is going to prepare a breakfast for us on that day. And uh, you will enjoy that for sure. So plan to come, ladies. It's going to be a great, great time. There's a handout in your bulletin for you to take and give to a friend about that, uh, that particular event. So, so be at those events.
The place was Jabapur, India. A young mother very quickly gathered her infant son. His name was Prim. They ran through the house as quickly as they could, gathering a few possessions and began to run for safety. The maid servant of the house had informed the mother that the father was going to kill her because she had decided to become a Christian. She ran as fast as she could for safety, and while she was running, she cut her foot. It turned into tetanus. It wasn't very much longer until she died. And Prim, the baby son, was left an orphan. This was the beginning of Prim Lau's life. British missionaries took Prim and, and made a commitment to Prim that they would raise him in the way of the Lord. That's the only commitment they could make to him was simply to raise him in the way of the Lord. They changed his name to Samuel. He became known as Samuel Lau. He eventually moved to Damal, India. He met Martha there. She was 23 years old. They had three children, Stanley, Vijay, and Ramola. VJ and his wife, VJ became known as Dr. VJ Lau, and Pushpa, his wife Pushpa excelled in education, and along with Stanley started uh, started a ministry uh, known as the Central India Christian Mission in 1969. Ramola married J. Henry. J. Henry came to the United States, and when he came to the United States, he received a college education, returned back to India, and started Bethlehem Bible College. Since 1969, Central India Christian Mission has faced unprecedented growth. Since 1969, listen to this, 17,000 people in India have been baptized into Jesus Christ. In 1970, their first church plant was planted Today, 3,000 churches have been planted by this particular ministry. In 1970, they started their first school with 17 students. And by 2014, they had 2,466 students attend their school. And 3,439 students had graduated from their schools. In 1971... The first new church plant to reach unreached people groups was started. And now today, 67 churches have been planted to reach the unreached people group in India. In 1972, they held their first leadership training session. Today, over 10,000 leaders have been trained by these sessions. In 1975, they opened their mobile eye clinic. 6,000 people have been screened in their clinics. And in 1976, they trained their first evangelists. And since then, 486 evangelists have been trained to spread the gospel throughout India. In 1981, they opened an eye hospital. In 1982, they started a media ministry. And to date... They believe that 100 million people, listen to that, 100 million people have been reached for the gospel through their media ministry. And their productions have been seen in 52 different countries. In 1993, Dr. Vijay Lau died. And in 2001, the Dr. Vijay Lau College was started And today, 1,716 have graduated from that college. Now, I tell you all that to tell you this. It all began with a little baby orphan, Samuel Lau, who had only one commitment on his life. That is that you will be raised in the way of the Lord. And because of that commitment, thousands and thousands, unnumbered people have been converted from Hinduism to Christianity. It all began with one little orphan baby. Today we're talking about a birth announcement. 
Our scripture text, if you take your Bibles, it's Luke the first chapter. Just turn to Luke the first chapter, verse 26 this morning. Luke 1, verse 26. We love birth announcements, don't we? We love to see them. We love to hear about them. And God, again, takes the initiative when he sends Gabriel to the region of Galilee to present the most important birth announcement in all of history. And God's birth announcement is presented to an engaged virgin. Her name is Mary. And God will bring an unexpected addition into the family. Look with me at that scripture text in Luke 1, starting with verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. And this engagement in the first century was a part of a two-staged marriage process. The engagement started, number one, with a betrothal. That was a formal witnessed agreement to marry and to give money for the bride. That's how it all began. And at this point, the bride legally became the wife of the groom. And then there was a second part. About a year later, the actual marriage took place, and the husband took the bride to his home. We know from history that you could enter into one of these engagements at the young age of 12. We don't know the age of Mary. But we can be guaranteed that Mary was a young bride. And it was during this engagement time that Gabriel presented that birth announcement. Now when we look at that birth announcement, we learn three essential facts about Jesus' birth. The first fact that we learn is this. Jesus' origins are of the Holy Spirit. Scripture puts it this way in Luke, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of the Most High, the Son of God. Now I want you to notice this. Jesus is called the Holy One. God honors holiness. And Jesus is set apart as the Holy One. One, he is set apart as the Son of God, and he becomes a model of holiness for each of us, and we are to follow his model of holiness. And then there's a second essential fact about the birth of Jesus in this announcement. His birth as a man is in the lineage of David, a royal line. Now, it just so happened that I was born in the lineage of the Stuarts. If you know anything about the lineage of the Stuarts, you know that the Queen of England is in the lineage of the Stuarts. So I was born in the same lineage as the Queen of England. Let me tell you what that means. That means that if about 1,200 of the right people either died or were killed, and it would include my mother, by the way, who is here today, all right? If they either died or were killed, I would become the king of England. You got that picture? <laughs> Let me tell you something today. Scripture tells us that because of Jesus, we are in that Davidic lineage. And the most important thing in all the world for you as a Christian is that you are in the lineage of Jesus. We are related to God. Sometimes we sing a little song, God is my Father, Jesus is my brother, and the blessed Holy Spirit is my guide. And the challenge from Scripture is that we act like we are royal people and we belong to God. And then there's a third idea in this birth announcement. His birth is superior to that of John the Baptist as well as every other birth in history. Jesus is the superior one. We point directly to Jesus and we look at Jesus. 
Now, the scripture not only talks about the announcement, but the scripture is very much about Mary. I want us to spend a little time looking at Mary this morning. Luke, the first chapter, verse 27 in this text says, The virgin's name was Mary. I want to ask you a question today, and I think it's a good question for us to consider. What does it mean to be favored of God? And I want us to look at that this morning. Mary is a model believer. Scripture explains to us that God will never fail you. You can always trust God. Look at verse 37. For no word from God will ever fail. Remember that. God will never fail you. And then Mary is favored by God. In verse 30, the scripture says, But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Let me tell you something about Mary. Mary is a model of God's grace. She had been graciously, graciously chosen by God to bear God's son, whose name would be Jesus which means Savior. Jesus was not born by Mary's merit. Instead, it was God's unmerited favor. From the very beginning of Jesus' life as his birth, Jesus would focus on grace. And when we look at Mary's life, she is the object of God's unmerited favor graciously provided goodness from God and Mary is seen as a faithful follower of God now the scripture tells us she was perplexed have you ever been perplexed when you suddenly realized that you were favored by God some of you have told me about those times you go through difficult days in your life and think wow this is tough but then you see how God walks you through those difficult days. You say it's tough being favored by God. And that was the story with Mary. She's perplexed and God uniquely steps into her life and brought her into his service. And God steps into our lives and brings us into his service. And her greatest asset is faithfulness the challenge from scripture is that we would be a faithful people for all of scripture she's honored as a model of faithfulness in her openness to serving God and Gabriel's greeting is literally grace you are highly graced and that's the story of Mary Mary is thoughtful Verse 29 of the scripture text says, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting is this. Mary has difficulty comprehending the announcement. She even asked the question, how can this be? She knows that she cannot be pregnant. She could not conceive a, a child because she is still a virgin. The answer comes in terms of God's creative overshadowing power I'm reminded of the song that we sang this morning you have never failed me yet you have never failed me yet and that must have been the song on Mary's heart and Mary's heart is and her faith is put to the test early on will she believe God has a captive uh, in her life God does not leave her alone in the decision. God creates new life for us as we trust him and as we follow him. And the angel states the basic premises, nothing, nothing is impossible with God. And Mary, Mary simply responds in humble obedience. And in verse 38 she says, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me, as you have said, may your word be fulfilled in me. And Mary is obedient. Verse 31, 
says, You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And then the scripture says, And the angel left her. And she must make the decision. Will she seek God's help in the future to be the person that God wants her to be? What a challenge she had in her life. This scripture talks a lot about the angel Gabriel. I want to mention just a few things. Gabriel explained that this would be a miracle. This would be the work of the Holy Spirit of God. He makes it clear. And then Gabriel was careful to point out that the baby would be the Holy One. The baby would be without sin. And Gabriel, the angel, ended his message by giving Mary a word of encouragement. Her aged relative Elizabeth was with child, proving that God, with God, nothing is impossible. And Mary believed. And that's her response that she will indeed Follow the Lord. Now let's look this morning too at the announcement of Jesus in the scripture text. This scripture text talks about the holiness of Jesus. Jesus is separated to God. Jesus is morally pure. He is divine. He shares the very nature of God. Jesus is without sin. Scripture talks about his position He is God the Son. He is the Son of the Most High. In His authority, He is seated on the throne. In His rule shall never end. It is an eternal kingdom in His person. It's interesting to me that when we look at this passage of Scripture, God the Father is mentioned, God the Holy Spirit is mentioned, and now God the Son is mentioned. We're talking about the very power of God is at work. And there's to be no question, Jesus is indeed that long-awaited Messiah. God's people expected a different kind of Messiah. They didn't expect a divine Messiah. Instead, they expected an earthly Messiah that would come in great power and would free God's people from Rome. Instead, God sent His Son. He sent His Son to free people from their sin and to provide eternal life. I love the way the different Gospels present the coming of the Son of God. Matthew presents the kingly Messiah. John presents a Messiah of heaven come down to dwell on earth. Luke presents the people's Messiah. And that's so important. You see, these people, these people of God who lived in Galilee were at very best criticized because they lived in Galilee. They were criticized because of the place they lived. You see, when you lived in Galilee, you lived with sinners. And they weren't as kosher as other people. But God, in His grace, chose a girl from Nazareth in Galilee to be the mother of Jesus, the people's Messiah. And Jesus makes a difference in your life, and Jesus makes a difference in my life. And He made a difference in the lives of countless men and women, just like Samuel Lau who only had one thing going for him, we will raise him in the ways of the Lord. He literally changed his part of the world for the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus, our Jesus, is the people's Messiah who came to earth as a baby and became the Savior of the world. Would you pray with me? Oh Lord God, how we thank you that we can share in this season about the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. 
we can look at Mary and realize that she is a model of service. And she was willing to take her life and just turn it over to you. And oh God, may we be the kind of people who take our lives, turn it all over to you, oh Lord. That's our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to invite our music team to come today and sing. So great in this Christmas season. I love looking at these messages of Christmas, don't you? Singing these Christmas songs and just realizing the difference Christ can make in our world. Would you stand and join me as we sing together?